The wind on the Iceland coast comes in sideways. Sharp as steel. Eric feels it hit his face slow at first, then harder. He's out here alone. No family, no warm room waiting. Just the house he built. Board by board. Breath by breath. Out here, one truth hits like a hammer. If his walls fail, he fails. No nails, no cement. Only old Viking knowledge holding the line. So how does one man build a blizzard-proof home with nothing but wood earth and grit? Eric pulls the high door shut, and the storm takes the night. Eric drags his hand across the cold moss wall, slow, feeling the weight he packed into it with nothing but time and grit. Out here, this isn't a house, it's a den, a shelter carved from dirt and grass the way wild animals survive when winter shows no mercy. And that's his life now. One man, no family, no help coming over the hill. A thin wall in this wind doesn't buy you a second chance. It breaks. You freeze. End of story. But the old Vikings knew something most folks forget. Earth holds. Turf pressed tight becomes stronger than half the timber in the north. So Eric dug the ground half a meter down, cutting the wind low to the earth where it slithers like a cold snake. Then he layered turf one foot two feet, each slab overlapping the next like living shingles, thick, heavy, packed. Archaeologists still measure turf houses in Iceland holding steady heat even when the world outside crashes to minus 30. That kind of cold can chew through bone but not through walls like these. It's heavy, it's warm, it doesn't move. For a man alone, that's the thin line between waking up tomorrow or becoming another drift of snow by morning. But walls are only the beginning. And when the storm starts twisting from the rafters down, only one thing keeps the whole frame from tearing apart. The old Viking joints, mortise, tenon, wood locking into wood like clenched fists against the wind. Eric remembers lifting every beam alone, slow, steady because out here, living solo on the Iceland coast wood doesn't give you second chances. Every cut has to be true. Every joint has to land right in the first time. One slip, one loose fit, and the storm will twist the whole frame before he even knows it's happening. A blizzard doesn't push. It pulls, it rips, it twists, and a twisting wind can break a weak frame like dry bone. But the Vikings had already cracked this code centuries ago. They built the Oseberg ship without a single nail using mortise and tenon joints so clean they still hold together after more than a thousand years. If those joints could survive the North Sea, they could survive anything falling from the Icelandic sky. So Eric starts carving. The mortise first, a deep pocket three to five centimeters in edges, squared shoulders tight. Then the tenon shaped smooth, no wobble. No cheat cuts sliding into place the way a knife sinks into a sheath. Wood meeting wood with a soft final stop. That's when he drives the wooden peg through the joint locking it down. No iron to crack in the cold. Just wood gripping wood the way Vikings meant it to. Locked tight. No creak. No break. The frame becomes a single body. A single spine bracing against the storm outside. And when the wind slams the house from the side, Eric hears the joints hold, breathing slow, steady, like the whole structure is alive. But joints alone won't save him. Not tonight, because once the frame stands firm, the storm goes for the next weak point, from above. And up there, the roof is a different beast entirely. Eric remembers climbing onto the half-finished roof, crouched low, working with the wind instead of fighting it. A tall roof might look good in calm weather, but out here, living alone on the Iceland coast, a tall roof is a liability. Because storms don't just hit, they pry, they twist, they peel. And if the roof's angle is wrong, the wind finds a way under the edge and tears the whole thing off in one clean rip. There's no partner to hold the ladder, no second pair of hands to catch a beam, no one to fix what breaks. That's why the Vikings kept their roofs low. A low roof gives the storm nothing to grab. The wind just slides off. The same way waves slide across a ship's back. Eric had studied those old curves. 
The boat builders' designs, Viking roofs mirrored the hulls of their ships wide, steady, built to take the full punch of the North Atlantic. A steep roof fights the storm. A low one makes the storm waste its strength. So he set the pitch between 25 and 35 degrees, the angle found again and again in digs from Norway to Iceland, steep enough for snow to slip away shallow enough to dodge the gale. Then he bent the rafters into a gentle arch, ribs of a ship turned upside down, spreading force instead of breaking under it. For the outer layer, he laid turf or overlapping wooden boards, each piece set like a shingle guiding snow downward because snow that stays becomes weight. Snow that slides becomes nothing. When the storm finally arrived, the kind of storm that shakes the ground itself, the roof didn't shout back. It answered with silence. The wind slid over. The snow slipped off. The beams didn't tremble. Out here alone, that silence is everything. It's the sound of a roof built to survive the worst night of the winter. The curved low-line roof held above Eric like a shield the same kind his ancestors trusted at sea. And as the wind kept hammering from above, he knew the house would hold. But the cold had another way in, not from the sky, but from below, from the ground creeping up under his bed, ready to drain the warmth straight out of his bones. And that's where the earth around his shelter the turf buried along the walls became the next fight of the night. Eric remembers the work he hated most, pushing dirt up the outside walls one shovel at a time until his house looked less like a cabin and more like an animal burrowed into the hillside. It wasn't pretty, it wasn't elegant, but living alone on the Iceland coast, he didn't need pretty. He needed survival, and the exposed walls were stealing his heat. The wind bit at them non-stop, sucking warmth out the same way the sea steals heat from wet skin. A bare wall out here is an invitation. The storm sees it. The storm takes it. But the Vikings learned a different trick. They buried their homes. Not completely. Just enough to make the wind lose interest. Earth banking turns a house into a half-buried shelter, a structure the storm can't get its fingers under. Once the walls melt into the land, the wind can't find an edge to pry at. It can't find a corner to lift. It can only slide past. Frustrated. Harmless. So Eric began building the earth bank. He shoveled soil tight against the walls until the dirt climbed nearly a meter high. Then he shaped the outer slope like a ramp, so the wind skimming low across the ground would slide upward and away instead of slamming into the wood. Archaeologists in Iceland still find these earth-banked homes, turf piled high around the walls, standing after a thousand years because the soil itself became part of the structure. The wind hit, the earth held, the house stood, and Eric could feel it. The storm circled the house like a hungry wolf sniffing for a weak spot, but the earth bank blocked every path. The cold had to work harder now, much harder. Instead of cutting straight through the wooden walls, it met a thick barrier of packed soil dense enough to choke off the worst of the wind. As the night deepened, Eric heard the storm testing the walls again, long high whistles slipping around the corners, but none of it got through. The house had become part of the hill itself, a shelter with no edges, no handles, nothing the storm could pull apart. And for a man alone in the dark, that was everything. But the storm wasn't done. It had one last angle left, not from the walls, not from the roof, but from the bones of the house itself, the frame that could still shake loose if the wind found the right moment. As the storm clawed for a final way, in Eric felt a hard truth run down his spine. The walls were holding, the roof was holding, but none of it mattered if the frame twisted from within. Out here alone, the house needed one last layer of strength, the kind you don't hammer, the kind you tie. And that's when the old Viking bindings came alive. Under the torchlight, Eric tightened the last knot. Slow, deliberate, his calloused hands pulling the rope until it bit into the wood. Out here, living alone on the Iceland coast, that rope wasn't just rope. It was a second spine, a lifeline, the thing standing between the storm and everything he'd built. 
because no matter how strong the frame was, a wild storm could still pry the beams loose like the lid of a box. One good gust, one bad angle, and the whole roof could lift right off. And there'd be no one there to grab it for him, no one to shout a warning, no one to help hold a beam in place, just him and the wind. But the Vikings had a trick for that, a trick born on the sea. They used the same bindings that held their ships together in the North Atlantic. If rope could hold a long ship steady against waves the size of houses, it could hold a roof steady in a blizzard. So Eric began binding the house the Viking way. He crossed the ropes between horizontal beams and vertical posts, creating tension from angle to angle, a diagonal brace made from nothing but fiber and strength. He used rope braided from roots and rawhide, the kind that doesn't rot fast, the kind that tightens when wet instead of loosening. Archaeological finds in Norway show rope binding was everywhere in everyday homes, not just ships. It was common because it worked. And when the storm finally came screaming over the hill, the ropes answered with silence. No slipping, no lifting, no shaking. For a man living alone, that silence was the closest thing to safety he'd ever hear. The knots he tied weren't pretty, but they were honest. They held because he made them hold. And every loop, every pull, every twist of the rope carried the same message, this house survives, or he doesn't. One man, one house, one rope that could decide everything. And as the storm hit its heart as slamming the roof like a giant hand, only those bindings kept the whole place from tearing open. Eric felt the force through the walls, the kind that could break a lesser home in an instant. But the knots held. The house stayed whole. The knight didn't win. And in that moment, in the heart of the storm, he finally felt it. His home wasn't just built. It was anchored. Morning comes weak and pale, spilling over the snow-covered roof. Eric pushes the door open and steps outside. His eyes tired, his breath shaky, but he's still standing. Still here, no nails, no cement, no partner beside him, just wood earth grass, and the hands of one Viking who refused to quit. Out here on the Iceland coast, that was enough, more than enough. Today we build with steel insulation engineered materials, but in the heart of a storm, what saved Eric wasn't anything modern, it was old knowledge, ancient problem solving. The kind of wisdom most people forget until the wind starts testing their walls. He looks back at the house, battered quiet proud, and a small fire lights behind his eyes. Because surviving the storm is only half the story. Inside that house, staying warm at minus 40 all night long, that's another tale entirely.